The universe is truly vast in size. It has been calculated to be tens of billions of light years in size. One light year is about 10 trillion kilometers. It is a distance light travels in one year. By taking a literal history from Genesis chapters 5 and 11, you can calculate that the universe is only about 6,000 years old. If so, how does starlight get to Earth from a distance greater than 6,000 light years? Shouldn't we only be able to see to a distance of 6,000 light years in the universe? Well first, the distances in space cannot be accurately measured. Obviously, we cannot stretch a string into outer space or measure these distances with a yardstick. And so distances are calculated, rather than measured. This is accomplished by a technique known as triangulation or parallax. Surveyors use this method using the laws of trigonometry which state that if the baseline and the two angles of a triangle are known, then the height of the triangle can be calculated. Because the distances to the stars are so great, the sides of the triangle are virtually perpendicular and so only the nearest stars up to about 200 light years can be measured by this technique. Greater distances are determined by the presumed sizes and intensity of the stars, redshift and many questionable factors. Therefore, there is no guarantee that the actual distances in space are as great as we have been told. But let's not argue over the distances in the cosmos. I myself do believe that distant galaxies and stars are billions of light years away. It is also important to know that the creationist is not the only one with the distant starlight problem. The naturalists following the Big Bang Theory have the same problem with distant starlight. It is estimated that the diameter of the observable universe is 98 billion light years, with the edge of the observable universe at about 46.5 billion light years away. But the seculars believe the universe is 13.8 billion years old. So how are we seeing light 46.5 billion light years away? They have the exact same problem. Also on the Big Bang model is the horizon problem. Suppose that the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. We look to the west and we detect cosmic background radiation. We turn our radio antennas to the east and we detect cosmic background radiation at exactly the same temperature. The radiation from the east and the radiation from the west are separated by an estimation of 28 billion light years away. Common sense tells us that the radiation from the east could not possibly be causally connected to that from the west, because information cannot travel faster than the speed of light, nor could the regions they have traveled ever from have been in communication. So how could it become so extremely uniform? The light we see from opposite sides of the universe has not had time to mix up to come to the same temperature in the alleged past 13.8 billion years since the alleged Big Bang. Big Bang believers say that rapidly inflated soon after the Big Bang solves the horizon problem. But cosmic inflation allegedly started 10 to the minus 36 seconds after the Big Bang and then stopped between 10 to the minus 33 and 10 to the minus 32 seconds later. The universe expanded 10 to the power 78 times in volume. How and why it started and smoothly stopped are unknowns. To believe this requires a lot of faith. It is a philosophical idea designed to solve not only the horizon problem, but also the smoothness problem, the flatness problem, the isotropy problem, and the monopole problem. It's an unknown to explain the unknown. So when the seculars bring up the distant starlight problem on the biblical creation 6000 years view, they have to remember that in their naturalistic worldview they have the same problem, and this is known as the best and biggest argument towards the creationist and the young earth. We should also remember that we do not know exactly what light is. We use light every day, but we don't know exactly what it is. Is it a wave or a particle? Is it a photon or part of the electromagnetic spectrum? Well, actually it's both at the same time, but never been observed to act as both at the same time. So light is a very strange thing and we are still learning more and more about it every day. But let's get back to the question, how can we see stars billions of light years away if the universe is only 6000 years old? While there are many theories to explain the distant starlight, for me the best answer is by using the anisotropic synchrony convention, instead of Einstein's synchrony convention. Let me explain this. The round trip average of the speed of light is 186,282 miles per second. In other words, the speed of light is measured by having it traveled in two directions and getting an average of 186,282 miles per second. But we do not know what is the one-way speed of light. It cannot be measured. Physicists have tried this in the past, but in order to measure the one-way speed of light, you have to already know the one-way speed of light. 
People will ask me, but why will the speed of light be different in opposite directions? But why would it be the same? You see, the point is we don't know. And to test the one-way speed of light cannot be done through synchronized clocks or radio transmitters, etc. Because in order to perfectly synchronize the clocks without motion affecting it, you have to already know the one-way speed of light, which is the very thing we are trying to measure. I recommend watching Jason Lyle's video on the speed of light, which I will leave in the description. It dives much more deeper into this. So the thing is, the one-way speed of light is a convention and not a property of nature. You see, if the one-way speed of light can never be measured, then we can pick what we want it to be. And that is exactly what physicists have done. They have decided to make it the same in all directions, which makes the math easier. You see, whatever the speed is you pick in one direction, your experiment will confirm. It's a convention. Like driving on the left side of the road, it's something we all agree to and it works, but you can pick another convention and drive on the right side of the road when you are in America and it works just as well. Albert Einstein said that light requires the same time to traverse the path A to M as for the path B to M is in reality neither a supposition nor a hypothesis but the physical nature of light, but a stipulation which I can make of my own free will in order to arrive at the definition of simultaneity. Einstein knew you can't measure the one-way speed of light but that it is something you choose. So by choosing the anisotropic synchrony convention, the speed of light is infinite when directed toward Earth and half C when moving directly away. You see, the round speed is set at 186,282 miles per second. And when it's infinity towards me and half C away, then it averages out the same. The reason why I would use the anisotropic synchrony convention is because it solves the distant starlight problem. And it is what ancient cultures used as they did not subtract off the light travel time as they did not know what the round trip of the speed of light was. When you see something, that is when it happens when you use this convention. And in my opinion, the Bible also uses this convention and it is applied in scripture as well. In Genesis 1.14 we read, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So I'll end off by saying this. We still have a lot to learn about the universe and about light, and it's honestly not smart to leave the biblical view of the universe to follow the Big Bang or secular worldview when they have the exact same problem of distant starlight. It just means we have a lot yet to discover. Thanks for watching everyone, and remember there is only true freedom in God. Have a blessed day, guys.